also a Midman Devala. I'm an artist, potter, I use porcelain and I'm making this film because I have this extraordinary experience of showing my work in Korea for the first time and this is a moment of great sort of centrality for me, sort of significance for me as Korea and Korean ceramics have been hugely, hugely significant to me for really for decades. I've been a potter all my life. I started as a child when I was five, taken by my dad, my father, to an evening class. And I remember sitting at a potter's wheel for the very first time, trying to make a, a bowl out of clay. Um, and just this experience, this extraordinary experience of seeing um, one material transforming itself as, as if it was alive into a form, into a shape, has been has really been the touchstone, the kind of central thing that I've been doing all my working life. I was apprenticed and trained both in Britain um, and also in Japan, um, where I first saw the techniques of, of, of Japanese and indeed Chinese and Korean ceramics in action, those very important experiences. And for 30 years I've used porcelain, um, this wonderful, beautiful material that sort of spans everything from the hills of, of China into Korea, into Japan, and all the way across uh, to Europe. It's a material that I, I love. It's, of course, the whitest of all materials. Um, and it has that uh, powerful sense of um, possibility. White is a really interesting colour for me, and I've in fact, written a book about the colour white, because its meanings change from culture to culture. Of course, in Korea, the meanings of white are, are so profound. That it's the colour of, of mourning, the colour of, often of grief. And in other places, it's the colour of, of beginnings. It has very different meanings in different places. And one of the things I do in this exhibition is to is to look hard at the colour white. You'll see in this exhibition different installations where I I almost isolate that colour. There's a piece made in connection to the great composer John Cage, where you'll see it's called Roanji for John Cage, where you'll see just these white objects closely brought together in a Know, aluminium frame. You'll see other pieces which also bring the poetry of white together. There's a, a, a recent piece I've made called The Interdicted Land, which is full of fragments of white, fragments of gold. Again, it's a, it's a poetic reference. It's a relationship with the American poet Emily Dickinson. Uh, and then just a few months ago, I finally finished a piece I'm very, very happy with called Sunday Morning, which has bigger porcelain vessels and gold together. And in all these cases, this is white porcelain about beginnings, about the beginning of a day or the beginning of an idea. And in fact, you know, I'm surrounded by, by porcelain and, and white uh, throughout my studio, as you see. But what I try and do is to bring the objects that I make, these porcelain vessels, into connection with the things that matter to me. Sometimes that's poetry. And throughout this exhibition, you'll see strong references to writers who matter to me. But quite a lot of my work is me talking to the poets I care about. Wallace Stevens, Emily Dickinson, the poet Paul Celan, who was born Anne Sell, and there's a beautiful I think, black piece in this exhibition, which refers to his, his beginnings. And then a much bigger piece called The Second Loss, which is a, a, another exploration of, of, of Paul Celan's way of fracturing, breaking apart language. So lots of poetry in this exhibition. And music too. John Cage, this great American who 
talks about the need to begin again. There's a piece in the exhibition called To Begin Again, this idea that you are endlessly restarting. And that, of course, is exactly what I'm doing when I'm picking up one piece of clay and then putting it down on the wheel and making a bowl and then doing it again. I'm, it's beginning again, beginning uh, that thinking process again and again and again, that repetition to discover how to make one thing work. So music and poetry, but also place, because the installations that I make, these groupings of, 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 of porcelain with gold, uh, with lead, um, with steel, these other materials that matter to me and are, are spread throughout my studio here in London. They're often made in relationship to very particular places, very particular places. They come out of a, a conversation with really interesting bits of the world. So this exhibition here in, in Korea has work which spans the world, work that I made for Venice and work for New York. For Venice, for one of the most extraordinary experiences of, of my life, I was allowed to work in the Jewish ghetto, in one of the great, beautiful, Renaissance synagogues of Venice, going up these stairs and finding this, this extraordinary synagogue. And I was allowed to put my work there, extraordinary opportunity and, and, and that would never have occurred to me that it was possible. And there are two works here that really matter to me. One stretched along a long wall is a piece called Tehillim, which means psalm. The Psalms are the great Jewish um, songs of exile, the great songs that go through the Jewish faith. And so in this long corridor, before you go into this beautiful synagogue, you see this great line of single vitrines, single spaces, each with a piece of marble and a piece of uh, uh, gilded porcelain, golden porcelain in it. So it's a kind of music and a kind of poetry, but it's on the edge of the synagogue. It, and you could look from the synagogue back through these windows and, and see this long piece. And then there's also one other installation, still beside me with your empty hands, a, a piece about mourning, about loss, which was also present within that exhibition. So Venice, very much present here. But also, the work that I made for the Frick in New York, and the Frick collection, as, as you know, is one of the greatest collections of old master paintings in the world. I mean, without doubt, Rembrandt and Goya and Velasquez, extraordinary works, studied throughout this house on the Fifth Avenue. And again, I had this amazing opportunity to, to, to make work and place it in the house. And, and so, as you went through the, the exhibition, you know, there were the great paintings of the world, Angra's great portrait, and then a vitrine that I made to place in front of it, that pause of space. Something to, to talk towards these extraordinary works of art. And in here, and here actually is a picture of it uh, with two of the greatest Rembrandt pictures, uh, the Polish writer and his Rembrandt self-portrait, and a huge pair of black vitrines uh, noontime and downtime, placed in front of these Rembrandt paintings. And in these black vitrines, which, which I brought here to, to Korea, you'll see steel. You'll see steel. Henry Frick, who made this collection, made his great fortune from steel. And I brought black porcelain into, into conversation with steel. And throughout this exhibition, you'll see works that I placed very carefully within the Frick, sometimes within pieces of furniture and alchemy inside Frick's desk and extraordinary pieces. You'll see them here throughout the, the exhibition, um, works which were alongside the greatest old master paintings on pieces of furniture and now taken away from New York 
I'm brought into conversation with this new space um, in Korea. So poetry, music, and place. And also a lot of me, a lot of autobiography, a lot of, a, a, a lot of me thinking about what it is to, to make pots now, make ceramics, try and make something which has some kind of integrity and put it out into the world. And so what I'm also showing is work that I've made in these last two very difficult years. In that lockdown of 2020, I started making vessels because I needed to make vessels, but then repairing them, mending them, thinking about how you can bring something else onto a vessel in order to show where it has been and what has happened to it. And I had two vessels in my studio. One, this beautiful um, 12th century Chinese bowl that had been mended in the 17th century. And here it is with this great mend across it, just a very basic piece of iron that's mended the damage of that bowl. But then also in the studio, I had this extraordinary bowl um, that, that means a huge amount to me. It's, of course, Chun Glaze. It's a Sung Dynasty um, bowl, tea bowl of great, great beauty, which had been mended with Kintsugi, with the, this golden lacquer line um, sometime in the 16th century. And really having this on my desk um, made me think very much about what I was trying to do as, as, as an artist using clay, which is to try and make objects that have a place in the world, can be placed in the world, uh, which show me and my hands, but also have this kind of connection to stories um, of, of brokenness and of damage, but also of repair uh, and of possibility. So bringing that kind of beauty and history together with what I make. And that's why, finally, the very newest piece here was only finished in January this year. And it's a table. It's a piece of wood um, onto which I've put porcelain slip, liquid porcelain, over gold, gold leaf. And then I've written through the porcelain slip um, a poem of Rainer Maria Rilke, one of the sonnets to Orpheus, where he writes um, about mixing death into everything seen, the magic of earth, smoke and rue being as real to him as the clearest connection. Nothing can trouble the dominance of the true image, whether from graves or from rooms. Let him praise fingering, bracelet and jug. Ihr Einscheinung in alles Geschalter, mixing death into everything seen. The beauty of thinking about loss and trying to record that. So here, it, it, you know, you have all kinds of my work, really almost a reflection of the last 10 years of what I've been doing here, writing, thinking, listening to, to music, of course, in these different spaces in the studio, picking things up, you know, and putting them down again, looking at, at, at the brokenness, broken shards, broken objects, broken sculptures from 4,000 years ago, and then trying to begin again each morning, to walk through the studio with my dog, with my coffee, sit up there in my potter's studio, pick up that clay and make another bowl. So I do hope that this exhibition allows you um, a chance to walk around the studio 
with me and, and, and perhaps overhear some of the things that, that, that matter to me most in the world. Thank you.